Good morning to our church family and our online extended community. It is great to be with you again on this beautiful Sunday morning. We are going to hear a warm, inspiring message this morning. And don't forget our week program this coming week. Please join us at 6. I want to thank you for your faithfulness in your giving and by doing so, investing in the lives of other people. I want to give you a scripture to encourage you to give and then give you the opportunity to give. Our scripture is from Isaiah 55 verse 2, the Amplified Version. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread and your earnings for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight in abundance. You see, God is asking us here two questions. And you can see it is two questions of concern. And when you are concerned, it comes out of love. So God asks these two questions out of love and asks us, why do we spend our money on things that are not bread? And our earnings on things that doesn't satisfy. Money is what we have. It is God's provision for us. So God asks us, why do we spend His provision on things that are not bread? Bread means things that are life-sustaining. God knows that we need bread for our physical life, the essentials of life. God knows that. And God knows we need spiritual bread to feed on for our spiritual life to become spiritually mature. God knows us, and that's why I ask a question. But it goes further and say, your earnings, those things that you deserve, why do you spend them on things that doesn't satisfy? Then God gave us a very subtle command. He says, listen carefully to me. Just not listen. He says, listen carefully to me. And you know, we can only listen to God carefully if you're quiet. Let's get quiet before God and listen what He tells in our heart. How to spend our money on bread. How to spend our earnings on things that satisfy. And if we listen to God when He speaks to us, you know what will happen? We will eat the food that is good and our soul will delight in abundance. And that is what God wants us to have. Come, let us be still before God and let's hear what He tells us in our heart. You can give your tithes and offerings. A slide will appear on the screen that shows you the two means that we have. You can either do it by EFT, there's our banking details, or by SnapScan, there's the barcode. Thank you once again for your faithfulness in your giving. And be blessed with today's giving, the live giving word that we're going to receive. Well, good morning, and uh, it's church at home. And it's wonderful to be with you, to all our Life Church uh, family. Really, we miss you guys. And uh, to our extended online family, man, really God bless you. Thank you for inviting us this morning into your homes and wherever you find yourself. Well, it's the 21st of June. And we all know that at the 21st of June, especially when you're in the Southern, southern Hemisphere, you're looking forward to this day because it's the change of season happening. But also, it is Father's Day to all our dads out there. May you have a wonderful Father's Day and I pray that you'll be spoiled rotten today, man, like every other day as well, because I know that we as dads, we get spoiled every single day. Maybe just a special word to all our dads out there. I'm really praying for you and I'm really trusting God that really, uh, uh, God for you, um, that you'll, man, uh, truly be the example that God has called you to be. Be the example for your wives, be the example for your children. You know, our wives needs, need an example to follow, but our children, especially when it comes to a daughter. A daughter needs to know how it feels to be treated like a princess and a, and a son needs to know how to serve Jesus with passion and with excitement. And I really pray for you guys at this time. And uh, so we, before we get in the Word, we are going to pray. We're going to pray a blessing over our dads, but also pray a blessing of the Word. I pray that you're, you, you, man, you're expecting for God to, to do something new and fresh in your heart. I'm excited to share the Word of God with you this morning. And I know that truly, man, the Word that I'm sharing with you this morning is a Word in season, and it's a Word we need to know at this time. So come, let's pray. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. 
on this beautiful Sunday morning. And first, we just acknowledge you as Lord and us, Lord and Savior. Lord, we are absolutely nothing without you. And I truly pray this morning, Lord, for our dads, Lord, Father, Father, that they'll truly experience uh, your Holy Spirit within their lives, Lord, that, that they'll feel, experience the churning of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Truly be the example to do what we need to do as fathers, Lord, so that we can lead our families, Lord. And as Joshua said, for me and my household, we will serve, serve God, Father, and that we will do that with a passion, with excitement. Father, we also pray for your word this morning, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you that I know that it's a word in season. And I know this morning, Lord, your word's going to have such an effect in the hearts of so many people. So, Father, I pray that you'll form the words through your Holy Spirit in my, in my mind, m- mouth, Lord, in my mind, in my heart right now in Jesus' name. And truly that it'll settle in the, in, in the hearts of, of everyone listening in this day. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we've been uh, focusing on our series called It's Time, and I've been truly been blessed through the series. And so the first part of our series was It's Time to Answer the Call. And we're looking at the, at the book of Judges, looking at the, uh, specifically at the life of Gideon as he defeats the Midianites. And in Judges 6, we actually, we actually saw, as we started off, where Gideon finds himself in a wine press, threshing out wheat, and uh, man, he was afraid for the Midianites that they'll come and steal his weed. And, and uh, here comes an angel of the Lord and says to him, mighty euro. And I really do believe that we need to see ourselves from God's viewpoint. We need to find our identity in God. And that's so important that we find our identity in God because where God is calling us into, we need to absolutely know who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that was part one. Part two was last week when we spoke about having confidence. You see, Gideon asked God three times for a sign. And whenever someone asks for a sign, I know it's something lacking. It's something that I'm well acquainted with is lack of confidence. And you know what? Our confidence is, is not found in ourselves, but our confidence is found in God. And that's why the Word of God says we should not cast away this confident trust we have in the Lord. And so, so man, confident in God, we need to find our confidence. And where God is calling us into, into in, in this, in this uh, spiritual walk is absolutely be so confident in this God that we serve. And I, can I say it again? In this God that we serve, not ourselves, because we cannot be confident in who we are. We'll just fail miserably. But also part of what we said last week was we need to put God first. You know, we can only have confidence if God is, is, is the all in all in our lives. The all sufficient God to know that he's number one because that is his place. He's got no other place. He's only got a place and it's, it's called number one. Well, today we are focus on, focusing on get up. It's time to get going. Because I do believe, you know what, that we are going to see a picture this morning in chapter seven. We're going to see a picture of, of a battle. But I believe that the battle that, that Gideon was fighting is absolutely for you and me. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a picture of a spiritual battle that you and I find ourselves daily in. And it's a spiritual battle that we need to contest every single day. But we're just going to look at it at a, just physically in, in what Gideon did. And I pray this morning truly that you'll get the spiritual lesson out of it and it'll settle into your hearts. So here we see in, in chapter 7, verse 1, you see Gideon ready, getting himself ready for battle. And um, 30, 32,000 uh, 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 um, men, uh, he's got a 32,000 army gathered, but the Midianites are 137,000. And I love the Word of God. The Word of God says that um, it's, it's, it, they are too many. And, um, and so God says to me in verse 3, he says, Therefore tell the people, um, tell the people who are timid and afraid that they may leave the mountain and go home. And so 22,000 left, 22,000 left. And at that moment, I was thinking to myself, you know what? It sounds so familiar to many stories that we've heard in the the Word of God. You see, the problem is this, is that we get so focused on on comparison and comparing ourselves. And sometimes we feel like the enemy is overwhelming. Well, let me tell you just one thing. The enemy is not all powerful. He's powerful, but he's not all, all powerful. We serve a powerful God. And that's why God is just showing us, you know, he's showing him a, 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 a physical lesson, but it's a spiritual lesson to you and me. And so God says, listen, let those who are afraid go home. Now that coincides with a portion of scripture we find in Deuteronomy 20, I think it's verse 8. And it says, those who are afraid need to go home because they will actually, um, how can, their, their fear is, is affecting everyone else. You know what that speaks to? That speaks to me. Because so, so many times we allow the things around us to infiltrate our hearts and our minds to such, a, such an extent that what comes out of our mouths is fearful. 
And it permeates through us because the Word of God says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And you know what, 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 what the heart is full of? Well, the mouth overflows. And you know what, as, child, as children of God, we need to be very careful and watchful what we allow into our hearts. So we need a filter. And I believe God has given us a spiritual filter, listen, so that we don't allow these things to affect us so tremendously, so that we can know who we are in God. Because as we've heard and as we've learned thus far, is we need to find our identity in God and we need to be, be confident in God. And when we put God first, I can guarantee you, listen, we will not allow these things to, to infiltrate our hearts to such an extent that we become fearful that what comes out of our mouths, listen, especially in the days that we're living in, will be affecting the people around us. Wow. That's why they needed to leave. If you're fearful, leave. Wow. I want to say to you, church, we need to know who we are in the Lord. And I just want to just highlight maybe just one, one or two things that I've, that I've, that I've I, mean, uh, um, I mean, when I look at the Word of God, there's, there's, there's so, many, so many characters in the Word of God that we can actually find this because I want you to, to see this because you know what? The greatest battle that you and I are faced with every single day is, a, is, man, is, is the battle of our minds. The enemy wants to get hold of, he wants to grip, grip hold of our thinking, he wants to grip hold of our hearts. Only way you can do that is to portray the things around us as detrimental, as terrible. And when, when, he, when, we, when, when, he, when he can do that, listen, when he can do that, he can actually get into our hearts. That's why the Word of God says in Ephesians 6, verse 10, our fight is not against flesh and blood. Now I want to I say this to you. If it was flesh, it would have been easy, man. It would have been easy. Take out the sword, brave heart. Let's cut off some arms and legs and let's do this, man. Let's get it over and done with. But you see, our battle is not against flesh and blood. And a lot of times we make it flesh and blood. I want to encourage you. Don't make it what it's not. You and I are called into a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle every single day. They, so let's, let's look at a, at a, at a couple of, couple of uh, um, examples in the Word of God. In 1 Kings, 1 Kings 18, we, we actually read about Elijah. Elijah, listen, full of the Spirit of God, kills 450 bold prophets. Man, the Word of God says that the, he actually he called out to God and it actually rained after three years. It didn't rain. So he called out to God and it started raining. Listen, listen to this, listen to this. He was so full of the Holy Spirit that he actually outran a chariot. In the last portion of chapter 18. But as we find ourselves, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 3, he received a letter, listen to this, from Jezebel that says, by, to, by, by tomorrow this time, you will be dead. And the word of God says that Elijah, the same Elijah who killed the bold prophets, the same Elijah who outran a chariot, was afraid. Oh man. You see, when the enemy can get into our minds, when the enemy can start, man, when he gets into our minds, it, man, he actually starts controlling how we think, how we speak, and what we do. And I want to encourage you this morning. Man, we need to get up. We need to get up. Then also, Elisha in 2 Kings 6, uh, verses 16 and 17, they were surrounded, his house was surrounded by the Armenian, uh, Armenian uh, army. And his servant actually went out and he saw this vast army around him. And he, said, and he came running in and he says, Master, Master, man, we're in trouble. What are we going to do? I'm afraid. I love what Elisha said to him. Don't be afraid because there are more for us than against us. And then he prayed. He prayed in, in, in verse 17. He says, Lord, open up his, his eyes and listen to me, his spiritual eyes. Open up his, his eyes so that he can see that there are more for us than against us. And when he looked up, he saw the vast armies of God surrounding the Armenian army. Listen, child of God, it's time for you and me that our spiritual eyes will be, will be, listen, will be opened up. Our spiritual eyes will be opened up that we'll absolutely experience what God wants to do in and through our lives. Oh man, I'm reminded of David so many times. He cries out, says, Lord, look at the nations around me. They're prospering. Man, it, it seems they're going, it, it's going so well with them. Doesn't it sound familiar? Because a lot of times, you and I, we, we find ourselves in that place. We allow these things to get into our minds. Then we start comparing, comparison, man, comparison. I mean, here's Gideon. Only, listen, only 10,000 10, are left after the 22,000 leaves him because they are afraid. Against, listen, 137. And you're gonna, we're going to read further. God actually reduces that more. We're comparing ourselves. When we start comparing, 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 allow that to slip into our spirit. But you know, every time God takes David back to the sanctuary, 
Or he shows David, he says, don't worry about that. For what I've planned for you, it's much greater. I love the word of God. It says, no eye have seen, no ear have heard. No mind can fathom what God has, has actually put in place for you and me, child of God. That's why we have victory in Christ. That's why we don't have to look at the things around us. We also see, I mean, I'm so, 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 so uh, reminded of the, that portion of Scripture, Numbers 13. It speaks about the 12 spies to go check out the, the promised land, Canaan. And I mean, 12 spies came back. 10 had a report of, listen, when we looked at them, we looked like grasshoppers in our eyes, but we also looked like grasshoppers in their eyes. Well, I don't know how they spoke to them. Maybe they had that conversation with them. But the other two came back and says, come on, let's take this land at once. Because God has promised the land. You see, identity. You see our angle. You see the promises, putting God first. You see, all 12 of those spies got what they reported. The 10 never got into the promised land, but Joshua and Caleb received their inheritance in Canaan. And that's where God wants us to be. And I believe, you know what, we need to find ourselves at a place where we truly experience, listen, experience, experience what God wants to do within our lives. Man, we're in a spiritual battle and we need to understand that we're in a spiritual battle. And we need to, listen, we, we need to be very careful what we allow in our spirit. I'm, I'm truly a news guy. I, I love news. But you know what I've, what I've done, I mean, for, for, I think for the past year, year now, you know, I, I, I used to wake up and the first thing I'll do is really put on the news. I want to be in the loop. I want to know what's happening all over the world. You know, I want to keep up to date. But you know, I've realized so many times that that news have made me negative. So what I do is, I still listen to the news because I still need to know what's going on. But you know what? I don't allow those things to filter into my heart. You see, we need a filter. And the filter we need is the Word of God to stop us from really, really seeing, listen, really, really allowing the, the enemy to control how we think and what we do. And so yes, yes, Gideon. Let's go on with our story with Gideon. Let's get into what God, what, what, what God wants to say to you and me. Um, he, um, uh, 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 let, let's, let's look at verse 3. Okay, we, we, uh, uh, so 22,000 left and 10,000 10, was, uh, 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 was, was, was available to, to fight. But then the Lord told Gideon uh, in, 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 in um, verse 4, he says, There are still too many. Bring them down to the spring. And so he said, divide them. Those who drink, uh, drink from the spring like, like dogs, you know, uh, um, let them go. And, and the others who actually drink uh, with their hands up, drink from their hands, let them stay. And only 300 was left after that exercise. <laughs> I mean, come on, only 300 left. You see, the picture that I'm getting is this. It's, it's those who, who actually drink, um, you know, like dogs, just, just, just sipping and drinking from the spring, are not aware of what's around them, are not aware of, of what's happening. But the others who drink from their hands are actually aware of what's happening. They actually come in faith and they come and they place what's in their hands before God. It's, it's, like, it's like worship. It's, it's like, Lord, I'm available. Lord, what I have, I give to you. It's, it's like, what, what is in my hands? And you know what? And God says, those are, those are the guys. They are, they are the chosen ones. They are the ones who is ready for this battle. And I, and I believe, church, if we, if we can start getting before God and say, Lord, use what I have mightly for your kingdom. I mean, I mean look at Moses. I mean, Moses, Moses stood before God and he says, but I cannot speak. God, God looked at him and says, Moses, 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 come on, man. What do you have in your hand? He says, well, a stick. Well, I'm going to do mighty exploits with that stick. I mean, exactly the same. It's like, Lord, here I am. Lord, use me mightily. Use me mightily. You see, in this, in, this, in this battle that we find ourselves in, we need to be so close to God. Oh, I love what Rabbi Zechariah, late Rabbi Zechariah said this. He says, the biggest battle that you will ever face is your daily appointment with God. Keep it or every other battle will become bigger. You see, in this process, in this absolute process, it's like, wow, oh, Lord, I, I need you. And I could just see the picture, and I hope you're seeing the picture. It's like, it's like Lord, I need you. I, I need you in this battle. Lord, I need you in this battle. So 300 was left. And it's so amazing because, you know, 300, which simply means this. They were outnumbered 456 to 1. Hope you're getting the picture. 
because the picture is becoming clearer and clearer. It's like, it's like, it's like the, 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 the portion of Scripture found in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 15. Um, uh, the, one of the sons of, 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 of Zechariah, actually, man, the Spirit of God came upon him. Jo, jo, king Jehoshaphat was, I think, fighting against the Midianites or the, uh, the Amorites. And, um, and at, that, at that moment, uh, the, the Spirit of God came upon him and he said this, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the vast army for the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. You see, when, it, when we feel outnumbered, all we need to remember. When we feel overwhelmed, all we need to remember. When we feel things just creeping into our hearts like, like man is just getting into our, into our spirit, we always need to remember that the battle is the Lord's. It's not ours. We are just vessels in His hand. We are just vessels like the 300 was the vessels to defeat the Midianites. Let's go on with, the, with our scripture. So, so verse 9, you can, please go read it. It's 20, 25 verses. Go read it just in context. Verse 9, it says, That night the Lord said to, uh, said to Gideon, Get up! Oh, I love that. Get up! Go down to the Midianite camp, for I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp and listen to what the Midianites say. And so... Gideon actually crept, verse 13, he crept up to, uh, just as a man was telling his companion about a dream he had. The man said, I had this dream, and in my dream a loaf of barley bread, now listen, you've got to be, listen very carefully, came tumbling down into the Midian, Midian uh, night camp. It hit a tent, uh, turned it over, and knocked it flat. Listen to what he spoke about. What was Gideon doing in the wine press? He was threshing out weed. The most common thing was a barley loaf. The most common thing that you would find amongst people was a barley loaf. And I love this portion of Scripture that is found in 1 Corinthians uh, 127. Listen to this. It says, But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chooses the weak things of this world to shame the strong. Oh man, God uses the common things. You see, God wants us to understand that the battle is His. And God wants us to understand, man, that we're not alone, that God is with us. And He'll use the most simplest things, listen, to confuse, to confuse the wise. Man, He used the simplest things, man, to, over, to overcome the strong things. That's why the Word of God says, that's why the Word of God says, I mean, I mean listen, the, 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 the weapons of our, war, of, of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty indeed to bring down what? Strongholds. Oh man, it might seem very elementary to us, but if we come humbly to God and say, Lord, the battle is yours, always remember that, man, God will do something great. When Gideon heard that, he found courage, and he said to his, to his army, listen, we need to divide in, in, in three groups, so 100, 100, 100. And he actually took one of the groups, and it says in verse 19, it says, It was just after midnight, after the changing of the God, when Gideon and the hundred men uh, with him uh, reached uh, to the edge of the uh, Midian night camp. Suddenly, listen what they did. Now, very important. I want you to mark this. Suddenly, uh, they blew ram's horns, broke their clay jars, and uh, the other three, uh, three groups blew their horns and broke their clay jars. They held blazing torches in their, in their left hand and the horns in their right hands. And they all shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Now you've got to get the picture. This is so amazing. Because, listen, listen, if you want to have victory over the battle of your mind, you need, to, you need to listen very carefully now. And I want you to mark this. If you can write it down, please write it down. You see, it speaks about the first thing. They blew their horns. Now, now. A ram's horn was not just an instrument of battle or sounding battle, but it is also an instrument of praise. I want you to turn your Bibles quickly just to uh, Psalm 150 and listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. You see, when I find myself in the, man, overwhelmed by so many things, I need to get my, my mind right. And the only way I can get my mind right that, that you know, that I don't feel overwhelmed is to start praising, praising God. You see, Listen to this, verse 1 to verse 6. It says, praise the Lord. 
Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty, uh, in his mighty heaven. Praise Him for the mighty works. Praise His unequaled greatness. Praise Him with a blast of a ram's horn. Praise Him with a lyre and the harp. Praise Him with a tambourine and the dancing. Praise Him with the string, strings and the flutes. Praise Him with a clash of cymbals and praise Him with a loud clanging of cymbals. Let everything that has breath sing praises to God and he ends off, he says, praise the Lord. Man, when I say that, I tell you, man, there's just a confidence building up inside of me. There's just a joy building. Listen, with the ram's horns. Then the second thing that they used was clay jars. Oh, clay jars. The picture of a clay jar is found in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 6 and 7. It says, we are like fragile clay jars that easily breaks. Now listen to this, easily breaks, so that we can be reminded that the power that is within us is not from us, but from God. Whew. It simply means this, I am so dependent upon you, God. I can never take credit for myself. I'm not in the credit game. Lord, all glory goes to you. Why? Because I'm like a fragile clay jar. That what I accomplish is because of you. As Paul says, I am who I am because of Jesus Christ. Oh man, what a picture. What an amazing picture. Then lastly, torches. Man, they blazed their torches. I mean, it was, it was just light all around them. It speaks about, uh, man, the word of God. Let's go to, I mean, if you got your Bible, just go read it in Psalm 119 verses 105. It says, the, the, uh, His word is a lamp unto my feet, the light unto my path. A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You see, it's in the word of God. If we stick in the word of God, if we allow the word of God into our, in, in, into our hearts, man, we are battle ready. That's why we need to spend time in the word of God. And I hope you're starting to get the picture. It was not about how many men Gideon actually fought. Listen, what he had was spiritual stuff, spiritual things. Listen to what John Piper says. He says this, When the power of darkness are arrayed, uh, arrayed against you and aim to destroy your joy forever, nothing is more precious than, uh, 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 than to have the Word of God uh, ready for the battle. You see, the fight for joy is not for the unarmed. That simply means when we spend time in the Word of God, we are ready, ready for the battles that we find ourselves in. You see, God, listen, God didn't say, Gideon, get all the swords, get all the guns, get all, uh, I don't think they, got, they had guns in those days. No, they didn't. Uh, but you know what? He didn't say that. He said, listen, what I'm, the picture I'm giving to you is what the New Testament disciples are going to use in their spiritual battle every single day. Wow, man. Wow, man. Praise God. Praising God. Praising God. Praising God. Understand that we need Him. We are so dependent upon Him. And then also the Word of God. That's how we overcome the battle of our minds. That's how we overcome the things that creeps into our hearts. You see, when we want to still, we, we need to still the corridors of our minds and the only way we can do it is to fight, listen, is to be victorious in the battle of our minds because only then and only then can God fill the crevices of our heart of what He needs us to do on a daily basis so that we can be victorious in everything we do. Come, let me, let me, let me end off. Let me end off this portion. Let's go to, to verse, verse 21. It says, Each man stood in a position around the camp and watched as all the Midianites rushed around in panic, shouting as they ran to escape. And then the, when the 300 uh, Israelites blew, blew their horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other uh, with their swords, <laughs> with physical things. Those who were not killed fled the places. And listen, confusion raged. Now listen, when we get into the Word of God, when we allow, listen, we allow the Word of God to change us and get us focused and, and, and get close to God. Lord, we need you. We are humble before you. It confuses the enemy. It confuses him because he doesn't know what to do now. You see, he's powerful, but he's not all powerful. You see, we, we only, that what we allow in our spirit, that's, that, that's how much power we give him. And so it caused confusion. It really caused confusion. 
And so verse 23, it says that Gideon sent the warriors of Naphtali, Asher and Manasseh who joined in the chasing the army of Midian. And Gideon also sent messengers throughout the hills, hill country of Ephraim saying, come down to attack the Midianites, cut them off on the shallow crossing. And so we read, they did that. They captured uh, the two uh, Midianite commanders and they were killed and they actually had victory. Listen, over the Midianite army. Listen to me, which simply, simply means this. You and I are co-laborers with Christ, with Christ in this absolute walk every single day. That's why it's so important that we need to keep our, listen, we need to win, win this battle daily. And we can because of what God has done for us, because of His Son, Jesus Christ, who paid a price. You see, we always work from victory. We never are defeated. No, don't let the world tell you you're defeated. You always are victorious in Christ. So we are co-laborers and we thank God that we can walk, work, work with Him. You know, there's a portion of Scripture in Romans 8 that says, the world is awaiting in anticipation. I think the word, the word says, the world is groaning for the revelation of the sons and daughters of God. Come on, church. Come on, church. We lose the battle because we lose the battle in our minds. Let's be renewed, as Paul says in Romans 12 to renew your mind so that we can find the acceptable will of God. Get in the word of God. So I want to remind you once again, come on, come on. The greatest battle that you and I can find ourselves in is in the battle of our mind. We have victory over it. Let's get it. Let's step up into it. Because you know what? Oh man, that's why we need courage. That's why we need confidence. That's why we need to know our identity in God. Because this is the place where we either win or lose. If we're going to do it in ourselves, we're going to lose. If we do it with the Spirit of God working inside of us, man, victorious will we be in everything we do. And so I want to encourage you. Don't allow the enemy to get hold of your mind. Don't allow him. Don't allow him. Use the Word of God to stand up against anything. Stand up against anything that the enemy throws at you. So come, let's pray. I want to, I want to encourage you and I pray that you've been excited. Man, I'm excited about the Word of God. I'm excited what God is saying to me. But I want to encourage you this morning. Let's do, let's go out and let's apply the principles of God's Word. Let's read through this portion of Scripture. Let's get the spiritual picture once again. And let's allow the Spirit of God to do what needs to be done within our hearts. Come, let's pray. Let's trust God. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We're excited of what you are doing. Lord, we're excited about your Word. And Father, yes, I think it's time for us to get up and get going. Get going into the Word of God. Get going into our data to get, get going, Lord, in, in doing what we need to do. Praise you on a daily basis. Find, find a daily time with you, Lord. I pray it in Jesus' name because only then, Lord, only then you'll come and fill the crevices of our heart, Lord. When, when the corridors of our mind are still, you can fill us, Lord. You can fill our hearts. So, Father, I pray it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, I pray for people whose minds are racing in and out, trying to figure out the days of tomorrow. And your word says, don't worry about the day of tomorrow. It'll take care of its own problems, Lord. When we start looking around and we start judging everyone around us, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray your word says, we are not here to judge. And I pray right now, Lord, that we will be still and know that you are God, Lord, as Gideon experienced it on the battlefield. You are God. The battle is the Lord's and I pray it Lord that we'll shut it out right now the battle is the Lord's so Father thank you for your word and I pray Lord that our minds and our hearts will be so focused so on who you are so Father we pray your blessing I pray your blessing on everyone Lord I pray a joy a joy will well up inside of everyone's heart so Father we say thank you and I just pray man Lord that we'll experience you all over and over again within our spiritual world in Jesus name Amen. Amen. To everyone else there out there this morning that's saying, I've never made a commitment to Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to encourage you. It's as easy as, Lord, I accept you as Lord and Savior. Uh, Lord, I invite you into my heart. And if you've done that, please go to our website and uh, go click on your next step. Just complete that, set it online. And you know what? I'm going to get back to you because I want to walk this journey with you. Really, God bless you to all the dads. Have a wonderful Father's Day. And, and uh, man, be spoiled today. And I'm looking forward in sharing the, the man, the word with you next Sunday as we get to the end of our series called It Is Time. Really, God bless you. Have a super Sunday with your family.